what I'm going to be talking about is reversible computing. <clears throat> now, the reason I'm interested and have been interested for a long time in reversible computing is because computing, there, there's some kind of computing that ought to be uh, subject to the laws of physics and the fundamental laws. And um, it turns out that every fundamental law of physics is reversible. What that means is that the equations you write down are essentially the same equations whether you're computing forwards or backwards. In other words, all the information you need to go forwards or backwards is there. And uh, that's true of physical systems. Uh, and um, so that's why I have been so interested in reversible uh, uh, models of fundamental processes in physics. There were some great problems, and the greatest of them was that uh, something called uh, probability or non-determinacy or so on has been a part of physics ever since quantum mechanics uh, was invented. Einstein didn't like this, and he used to say, God doesn't play dice. Uh, and I don't like it either. It doesn't mean I'm anything like Einstein, but basically uh, he uh, was out of uh, agreement with essentially the whole field of theoretical physics, and so am I. Uh, but uh, perhaps, uh, you know, it means a lot less in my case. In any case, uh, the point is that uh, many fundamental processes in physics, like Newtonian mechanics and so on, uh, work just as well for time going forwards and time going backwards. So if you had a movie of our solar system and the planets are whirling around the star, which is the sun, moons going around the planets and so on. If you play it backwards, it looks like the same thing, except certain aspects wouldn't look the same. Uh, in other words, beginnings and endings don't really look the same, but as the process goes along, it looks very similar. So there's some support for the concept that maybe physics is in some sense microscopically reversible. And that is despite the fact that things like Niagara Falls, it's pretty obvious we don't expect physics to allow Niagara Falls to run backwards. But if you looked at the great detail of what happens to each molecule of water as it goes over the falls, if you looked at that level, you would see that that Niagara Falls going backwards would not actually violate a law of physics, it's just that it would be highly improbable. In other words, uh, for uh, the water to go uphill, well, the air is involved in the collisions of the molecules with the air molecules and so on and so forth. And there are air currents and this, that, and the other. And as improbable as it is, it doesn't violate the laws of physics. So that's one point. Another is the idea of a discrete model. This is uh, in some sense based on uh, what we've learned about computers and uh, the idea that we know that any computer can be uh, uh, modeled exactly. Any computing process that one computer can do can be done exactly by any computer. But some do it very fast and some do it very slow. So the computer in my watch or the one in my phone could do the biggest computational job in the world uh, if it had enough memory. 
and it would just be fantastically slower than using a supercomputer. So these are various facts about computing that the minimum you need in order to have a computer because one computer you know can pretend it's another. It's just usually slower. These are, those programs are called simulators when one computer simulates another computer. So if computer A is simulating computer B, then B within A runs a lot slower than B would if it were implemented in hardware. But that aside, they do the exact same things. So what that means is if, if as I believe, nature is some kind of computational process at the bottom, that means we should be able to program a computer to do exactly the same things if it has enough memory or to do the extent to which its memory will be sufficient. And if it is just a regular, what we call universal computer. By the way, any computer you buy today meets the standards of what is a universal computer. The word universal just means that this computer can be programmed to act identically, that means process the data identically, to any other computer, except for the speed at which it does it. it might do it very slowly, but it can do it. 